Teslas are divisive vehicles. Owners love them and haters, well, hate them. And they especially hate the bloke who runs the company. But the value equation is hard to beat and the sales figures bear that out. The Model Y is Australia's top selling electric SUV and the nation's second most popular EV behind only the Tesla Model 3 sedan. But with more EVs being released almost monthly, should this one still be at the top of your shopping list? There are three Model Y varieties, including the top-spec performance and mid-spec long-range versions. But right here, we're testing the entry-level rear-wheel drive Model Y, which costs a bit under $70,000 plus on-road costs, or around $72,000 drive away. Award-winning rivals from Korea, like the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5, are still more expensive, and crucially, in short supply, where the Tesla is readily more available. Longer, wider and taller than the Model 3 sedan it shares parts with, the Tesla Model Y is a distinctive vehicle and it does stand out, but it's not aging gracefully in my humble opinion. Its cartoonish appearance is very much a case of function before form, because it looks top heavy and bulbous, but the ungainly optics bring around impressive storage versatility and cargo space. Our test car here has a deep blue metallic paint job, which adds $1,500, while the 20 inch induction wheels add a bit more eye candy for another $2,400. Instead of an engine under here, you get a skateboard. Now I just chucked that there to show you how much room there is in the front, and it's pretty good. And I love the fact that it's really secure. Once you've shut that, nothing's getting in there, but there is a single e-motor that's smaller and simpler than a conventional petrol engine located just above the rear axle. It's got about the same amount of mumbo as a petrol powered V6 and can hustle from zero to 100 in around seven seconds, which is not super fast for an EV, but it's pretty quick for a near two ton SUV. The 62 kilowatt hour battery pack is good for a claimed 455 kilometers with a full charge, which takes around 24 hours using a regular three pin household power point. It's much quicker using fast chargers, as you can see in our little pop-up graphic. And the fact that Tesla's EVs have access to an established charging network effectively doubles the number of charging options compared to other EVs. However, this model can't charge at the full 250 kilowatts on a Tesla fast charger, only 170 kilowatts due to its lithium ion phosphate battery chemistry. The transmission is a single speed reduction gear driving the rear wheels. Just like the exterior design, the interior is a conversation starter. And, you know, while fit and finish is surprisingly good, this minimalist ethos will polarize opinion. My view, I actually quite like it, but it's not without its flaws. But let's start with the major touch points like the steering wheel, the seats, the center armrest, and the doors, which look and feel great. Sure, it's not real leather, but it is impressively soft and supple and has better stain resistance. The power operated seats are really comfortable and there's a, there's a tangible sense of space up front thanks to its tall body and that massive glass roof. You also get power adjustable steering wheel and mirrors, but you have to dial through a few menus to adjust them. That's one of the things with the Tesla. The cockpit is so clean and so simple that even the most basic functions have to be operated through the screen. We're talking about the glove box, the air conditioning, the climate control, and even air vent direction. It's annoying in some ways and can be overwhelming for the uninitiated, but you do get used to it. And there are clever inclusions like a medical grade HEPA filter, heated seats for all occupants, and even a pet mode for when you leave little Poochie in the car. You also get a 13 speaker audio system as standard on all Model Ys in Australia, something the Model 3 does not get. Storage solutions are very good with two huge storage cubbies in the middle, one with a 12 volt socket, the other with a pair of USB ports. You've also got twin wireless phone chargers. There's a USB A port in the glove box, large carpeted door pockets, and two mid-size cup holders, but they're not spring-loaded, which means involuntary leakage could occur. 
There's only one digital screen in the Tesla Model Y, this large high-res 15-inch jobby. And that means there's no digital drivers display, although I have seen some Tesla drivers put an aftermarket version here. But if you don't do that, all you've got is this tiny little minuscule speedo in the top corner. And it takes your eyes off the road a little bit, and to be honest, I don't like it. Maybe it's something I get used to over time, I don't know. The menu system also takes a bit of time to figure out, but it has so much functionality. There's a web browser, inbuilt TV streaming services like Netflix and YouTube, a range of video games to keep the kids happy while recharging. And my favorite, the whoopee cushion. It's an oldie but a goodie. And it now comes with a ludicrous fart noise. While the SUV misses out on a lot of features standard on other modern cars like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity, it does have excellent sat-nav, a reasonably reliable voice control system, and is basically a multimedia tool on wheels. Although you can only use three of the car's eight cameras in real time, rear view and two side views, those cameras provide a, a constant quasi 360 degree dash cam system that you can set to record whenever you want. And there's a sentry mode that constantly monitors the car when left unattended. Two systems that very few rivals offer. The level of smartphone integration and remote operations is impressive too. So you can use the phone as a key and even monitor the car via GPS. Over the air wireless upgrades also keep the car's operating system up to date. In terms of safety, you get seven airbags in the latest Model Y, and while it misses out on a few safety functions common in its competitors, the lane keeping system is very effective for freeways and arterial road driving, but it's not quite as seamless on urban streets with lots of parked cars. Tesla's controversial autopilot or full self-driving system is not yet legal to use in Australia either. The back seat is quite roomy for my six foot frame. There's plenty of legroom, and I like the fact I can get my feet right under the seats there. It's a bit like premium economy. And look at this, headroom is really good, especially compared to the Tesla Model 3 sedan. Um, you've got an ultra wide fold out armrest here, which is nice, and this beautifully integrated headrest. And check this out. The middle seat is actually quite usable because there's no transmission tunnel. So I've actually got a bit of leg room here. Not bad. Amenity is pretty good with twin air vents, dual USB-C ports, concealed coat hangers, LED reading lights, and ISOFIX child seat anchorages. But unlike in some other countries, there's no seven seat version, which is a shame. And it also misses out on a vehicle to load system, which is, um, like an extra power point that something like the Kia EV6 has. You get a little power plug down there and you can put in a microwave TV, whatever you want. And that feels like an opportunity missed. Like all good SUVs, you get a power operated rear tailgate that reveals a huge boot area. You'll get several large suitcases in here. And I love the fact there's a lot of storage cubbies too. You've got these two deep pockets for charging cables and whatnot. And check this out. That is a huge tub. You could bath a baby in there. Not that I'd recommend that because it's kind of carpeted, but you know what I mean. There's a 12 volt power socket and power folding rear seats, but no bag hooks or a spare tire. So the interior of this SUV is certainly distinctive, but can the same be said for the way it motivates? Cue the driving music. So this vehicle carries the dubious honor of being the slowest Tesla ever sold in Australia. That said, it's not sluggish or lethargic. It picks up quite nicely. And look, if you're coming from a conventional combustion engine car into one of these, you're gonna love the instant throttle response. It's really quite impressive. But in the world of EVs, it's not a particularly fast machine, especially from standstill, as the single e-motor struggles to propel its 1.9 ton mass. But once in motion, acceleration is surprisingly brisk, and it is a dab hand at overtaking. I really like the steering in this car. It's 
got a bit of weight to it and it's super direct. You don't have to turn it much to get the, the car moving and together with a low center of gravity, firm suspension and grippy tires, it's got really good body control through the corners. It sits very, very flat and can be surprisingly satisfying on a smooth section of road. But on rougher roads, the Model Y leaves a lot to be desired with average ride comfort due to the stiff suspension setup. The car feels rigid and unforgiving over bigger cracks and fissures in the road, which is noticeable around the suburbs, at lower speeds, but also on country roads. This bleeds into refinement, which is average. And sure, it can be beautifully quiet on smooth roads, the double glazed windows and silent motor doing great things, but over speed bumps and, and harsher, sharper edges, you really feel it and you really hear it as well, especially from the back of the car. If Tesla had have adopted adaptive dampers or simply softened the suspension somewhat, it would have been a more comfortable cruiser. But instead, I found myself gripping the wheel a little tighter and bracing myself every time a pothole was approaching. The official range per battery charge is rated at 455 kilometers. And while we couldn't quite match that, we managed just under 400 kilometers, which is pretty good considering the type of driving we did. We, we weren't hypermiling or trying to get super duper efficiency. Um, what's interesting though, is on the trip computer of this media car, the average range per charge was just under 300 kilometers, which suggests there's a few heavy footed journalists around. In terms of visibility, there's a lot of upright glass around the vehicle, which makes forward and lateral vision very, very good. But the rear windscreen is so pinched, it's hard to see much out the back. Despite that, and the lack of a proper driver's display and the firm suspension, I've quite enjoyed my time driving this Tesla. Um, it's really fun just to get around in. It's super responsive, it's great in the suburbs, it's good on the freeway. And there's something nice about that idea of, of, of streamlining entry and exit from the vehicle. There's no start button, you just get in, hit drive and start going. Although I love these seats, they're comfy, they're nicely elevated, good view of the road. One thing I don't like about them, headrests, they're not adjustable. Boo. The new car warranty is subpar at four years and just 80,000 kilometers although the battery warranty is better at eight years and 192,000 kilometers. Tesla also guarantees at least 70% of the original vehicle's range after the battery warranty is up. Service intervals are every two years and not too expensive. And charging the car at home will cost you around $20 for a full charge or around $40 per charge on a Tesla supercharger. Not bad for around 400 kilometers of driving. When you buy a Tesla, you join a special club, whether you like it or not. Many owners will sing the car's praises because it does things so differently, but there are pros and cons here. Ride comfort is average. There's no Apple CarPlay. There's only one digital screen. The list goes on. Indeed, Tesla has reinvented a lot of stuff that, well, didn't need reinventing, but the Model Y should still be on your shopping list because it represents impressive value and offers the sort of integration of technology and, and standard features that many of its rivals are still struggling to match.